When I grow up, I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be an architect. I wanted to be originally a rocket and then a phys ed teacher. I was never really sure. I thought I wanted to be a baseball player. I wanted to be a scientist. Draw comic books, actually. Everything ranging from a nun to a stewardess. If I really wanted to be a basketball player. You're about 30 years old and you've accomplished everything you've ever wanted to accomplish. And it's over. You'll never go back to it. You don't have a path anymore. Imagine being one day king of the campus here where literally girls are slipping their phone numbers underneath your door, um, people are giving you things, inviting you to parties, to you're picking up and doing toilets after the same kind of college kid that you actually were worshipped by. I really was never a very good student. I went to a small school and I played all sports until I found one sport. Uh, basketball. It was something to do with the speed and uh, the flow of the game that really uh, grabbed me. I was first team all state uh, my senior year in high school and a lot of that was based, based on uh, Syracuse University recruiting. And uh, the skill that I brought, Syracuse University really needed at the time. So I went from being a big fish in a little pond over to the ocean. A lot of writers said I'd never play Division I ball, much less come up here and be a three-year starter. It's very hard to play a speed position when you're slow and you can't jump. See, I've never dunked or any of that. Uh, so you have to really learn how to do it. You have to go out over and over and work on your game. I did things like, I'd go out and shoot in the rain, because if you can make baskets in the rain, I'll bet you can make baskets in a gymnasium where it's not raining. Unless you have that kind of work ethic, you're not gonna make it. It's too competitive. I played in the very first Big East game. I scored the first basket in the dome. My first three years, we were top 10 in the country. But my father was the apple of my eye. He must have been diagnosed my sophomore year that he had cancer and this is your last run. So I didn't realize it at the time, but he, he caught a lot of games. He caught an early season game that is my favorite. Um, it was a college doubleheader in Madison Square Garden. Score 16 points, start. That's probably the high point of my uh, college career. And I walked my father across the street after the game, and I just said goodnight to him. And he died huh, in the very beginning of my junior year. Uh, once my dad died, I lost a little sight of my academics. I uh, never graduated, and, and uh, I, I knew I was doing exactly what I dreamed of doing, and why not just enjoy the moment? You know, I didn't really put pressure on myself to be an accountant or a lawyer or any of these kinds of things. It was just a thing where basketball really fulfilled me, and I got good at it, and I got to be a local hero and all that, and you'd be surprised how quick it goes. Within years, uh, three or four years, they don't even remember you. I was drafted by the New York Knicks late, and I got cut, and I went overseas, and I played in England. I was very lucky to be able to play three and a half, almost four years in Europe. There was a certain loneliness that set in after, you know, I've climbed my last mountain. I'm not gonna play ball anymore. I'm not gonna get the attention. The thing that I made me since I was a boy, well, I accomplished that, but there was a, a sadness that that was over. In 
And I got going down the wrong road and I, I was drinking too much. And again, the work ethic that I told you about, I, all of a sudden I was working on drinking. Most boys, they end up in the beginning watching cowboy movies. The first thing you see is when they come in off the range after selling their horses or cattle, what do they do? Well, they run to the saloon. That's the way it is, but I don't think that's right, that your first image of men are standing around drinking and shooting their gun in the air. And I was looking at the world through a set of glasses that were negative. Once I took those glasses off, I saw how good the world could be, and I started to maybe push myself a little bit more. I just wanted a little more quality in my life. I was brought up better. Uh, I walk to work every morning, and uh, I get up at five o'clock, and I'm out the door at six. I'm from Syracuse University, and now I'm a janitor painter here. So no one, you know, none of these kids knew. They were actually, some of them bet others when I was working in the dorms as a janitor, I'll bet you anything he didn't play basketball here. They had heard it. And come to find out, they had to pay money. These two guys, they're accountants for Price Waterhouse down in New York City, and they saw me coming over with my keys to hang up my keys and go home for the day. And they just couldn't believe that I was a janitor here at SU. I could see the the their jaw dropping in disappointment that like, here's this kid I used to think a lot of and now he's a janitor. It's, it's pretty humbling to see their reaction and how I dealt with it is, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing right now and there's nothing to be disappointed in. And those are things that motivated me too, to keep going and to go back to school. I finished on the Dean's list. I never thought I was as smart as I turned out to be. My last seven out of 10 classes were A's because I matured, I grew up. I'm in a $100,000 house on janitor money, basically. I've traveled the world, I've seen 16 countries. Uh, I got the most out of my ability. I'm working at an institution that I respect. I actually do what I love to do. And they say when you can uh, combine your career with something you love, it's no longer a job. But I have a new direction in that I just want to live my life right and get the most out of it. I don't have the same goals as a lot of people, but I do have my own set of goals. And basically, I, I know one thing, I'm going up the right path. I see the world differently and it just tastes better. Later in life, your life's gonna change and are you gonna be man or woman enough to deal with that? And what am I doing now? I'm a musician. I actually teach nursing. I do uh, work on IT projects. A scuba instructor. I'm a registered nurse for the last 33 years. I'm a professor of library science. Now I am a stay-at-home mom. And a funeral director. I think it's been positive. When you're a little kid, you never think about the notion of being those kind of things. You think of, you know, bigger notions of baseball players and astronauts. I did it, and that's history. I'm not disappointed. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. Thank you very much. I have not thought about that in a long time. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I bet you get a lot of people. It does. It kind of scratch your head. See you guys.